Look, I know some of you out there are fans of Halloween 3, but all I'm going to say is, thank God, Michael Myers has returned to Haddonfield. What is up everyone, Movie Wayne back again with another review and this is going to be for the 1988 film Halloween 4 The Return of Michael Myers and this is directed by Dwight H. Little and stars Donald Pleasance, Danielle Harris and Ellie Cornell. This tells the story of 10 years after the events of Halloween 1 and 2 and sees Michael escape an asylum yet again in order to track down and kill his little niece Jamie. Halloween 4 is a film I owned on VHS, I used to give it a go now and again, but I never particularly warmed to it, it was just never one of my favourites, but that was the case with Halloween 2, and on that rewatch I absolutely loved it. Now I know this is one of the more loved films in the entire franchise, but my memory is kind of foggy with all of these films leading up to Halloween H2O, that's the one I remember the most. So what did I think on this rewatch of Halloween 4? Let's find out. I imagine a lot of people back in the day were excited to see Michael Myers come back after Halloween 3. It wasn't really loved back then because Michael Myers wasn't in it. So just the title, The Return of Michael Myers, I can imagine a lot of people were anticipating this film. And you know what? I was looking forward to it as well because I wanted Michael back after seeing that movie. And for some, they may have had to wait, what, seven years? <laughs> but for me, it was a day. And that's the beauty of binge and franchises, I suppose. And when this movie opened, I got really in the mood. It's quite a famous clip I see online all the time now. Of when October comes around, people seem to share the opening of Halloween 4, which is just a lot of you know, Halloween decorations being filmed with this eerie background music on what looks like an abandoned farmhouse. And it then cuts to this ambulance just going down this really dark road with thunder and lightning and pouring down rain on its way to pick up Michael Myers to transfer him to another hospital. And I don't think you get more Halloween themed than that now, do you? By the way, though, I do think it's an idiotic decision to have Michael Myers, who has killed on Halloween night twice in his life up to now, to have him transferred the night before Halloween because logic just says that he's gonna escape, he's done it before, and then starts slicing and dicing again. So whoever the character was within this film who made that decision is a fucking moron. And when we are introduced to our main characters of this film, I instantly thought these were two young girls who I could get along with and get behind. Danielle Harris, who plays Jamie, who is the daughter of Laurie Strode. She is having these visions of Michael coming together and these nightmares, but even though she's not the best actress in this movie, and a lot of Halloween fans might criticise me for saying that, I think she's good enough. I just don't think she's anything amazing, especially to the young kid actresses you see today, but she's fine for this movie. And also, you see Rachel, who is very, very kind as her stepsister. She's always caring about her and wants her to be okay from having these visions and always telling her that she loves her and stuff. I thought these are two protagonists that I can get behind. However, I do feel like Laurie is shunned to one side within this story here. <laughs> I mean, we are told she died in a car crash, but it's very, very brief. It's just all hush-hush. It's like, yeah, she died in the car crash, now deal with it. Story, moving on. And even though I'm not too bothered about her not being in this film, because I'm not the biggest Jamie Lee Curtis fan, although I did like it in the original Halloween, I do feel for fans of this franchise that they should have been given a little bit more of an explanation. I looked into why she wasn't in this film, and apparently it's because her career really took off and she wanted to leave Halloween behind. So maybe this was just the creator saying, yeah, well, fuck you then. And when I seen Donald Pleasance back in the role again, I was kind of mixed because I love this character, but he also felt very shown in because there is no way on God's green earth that this man survived that explosion in Halloween 2. I was very intrigued out to how they were going to bring him back into this film because when I watched the end of that, I just thought he's dead. There is no way he is dead. Michael, yes, because he got shot six times over a balcony and he's probably not human, but there's no way Loomis has survived. It just is not possible when you watch Halloween 2. And yet here he is with just a little scar on his face, which looked terrible, by the way. Uh, it just We're just told that, yeah, he nearly died. That's it. So we have to carry on with that too. 
But like I said, it's not really too much of a negative because he is in fact my favourite character in this entire franchise. A Halloween film with Donald Pleasance is a better one without him, I suppose, especially up to now in this franchise. And I'm glad that he's, he was in this movie. You know, I, I was kind of bummed when they killed him in Halloween too. So for him to come back, really, even though it doesn't make logical sense... I can look past that because I love this character and he's just back to his usual self in here, tracking down Michael with every ounce of his being, warning others that he's going to kill and just getting angry and screaming in people's faces and just doing what he does, kicking people's asses. Now it may sound like I'm being a little bit conflicted with this film here with a few negatives to do with the story and stuff, but I did really have a good time with Halloween 4, especially when it involves Michael Myers causing a bit of carnage. There are a few more things I didn't like, but more on that in just a minute. I mean, this is an on-the-road movie in the background for a large chunk there. Dr. Loomis is always on Michael's tail. Now, from finding the ambulance that he escaped from, of course, he escapes on the transfer, to... The service station where he's finding all these dead bodies and stuff where Michael's left in his way to the actual confrontation at the gas station where he tells Michael to take him and leave the people of Haddonfield alone and then it insult ensues into a little showdown and the gas station fucking explodes and Michael just drives away with the Halloween theme, you know, in the background there just... As he playing as he drives away? I mean, for me, that is one of the coolest moments in the Halloween franchise up to now. Talk about a horror movie oozing some style there. Another standout moment for me here is where this power station worker called Bucky says, you better leave to Michael Myers or I'm calling the police. <laughs> and Michael Myers just picks him up and throws him onto the power lines, causing a massive blackout in Haddonfield, which is what Michael wanted. I mean, if you're Michael Myers, you're being very creative there, aren't you? Killing two birds with one stone. I also thought the lynch mob who came for Michael was a really good idea into this movie because it just shows how much the town are fed up with this case of Michael Myers just, you know... Scaring the shit out of everybody and coming to Haddonfield all the time and just murdering people at will. And I like the way the sheriff, who's a cool character in this movie, by the way, kind of gives this lynch mob his blessing because they just want to take Michael down. They know the threat. They know that he's not one to, you know, let off lightly. They just want to go out there and kill him and get rid of him for good. And you just kind of know that they're going to kill an innocent person on the way with who's dressed as Michael Myers, don't you? I mean, rest in peace, Ted Hollister, I suppose. Shit, Earl. It's Ted Hollister. You dumb son of a bitch. Now, we're just going to talk about Jamie Lloyd for a second here. Even though her dialogue isn't delivered to the best of an elite child actress or anything like that, what I will give it as a massive positive is that she always looks terrified in this movie. When she thinks Michael's coming for her, when she's having dreams of Michael, or when Michael is actually coming for her, she looks scared to death. And that was definitely the best part of her performance. She pulled that off really well. She generally looked terrified. But the ending there is absolutely masterful, in my opinion. Jamie wearing the same sort of costume that Michael Myers wore when he was just a six-year-old boy killing his sister... She wears the same type of costume, kills her mum, and then just stands at the top of the stairs with a fucking butcher knife, with the music playing, the Halloween theme, and Dr. Loomis sees her and just screams, No! No! And then just... As he knows, everything that he's tried to stop for all these years is about to happen again <laughs> with this young girl, and even tries to shoot her and just end it all there, for Christ's sake. I just think that was an absolutely brilliant ending. No! <laughs> This isn't a bit of a mixed door for me though because it's a tried concept but it worked the first time and I don't usually like it but maybe this is what the franchise just needed at this point after Halloween 3 but the script feels very much similar to the original film. They don't go in too many different directions apart from one or two moments. I mean Michael escapes an asylum then he kills people you know 
while he's travelling to Haddonfield, much like the off-screen kill in Halloween, the original 1978 version. And then he comes to Haddonfield and tries to kill a relative while killing other people around him. And then he's even fucking shot at at the end. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not the best of thought-out scripts, but I imagine they just wanted to play it a little bit safe there, bringing the franchise back. Although this does have way more cheesier moments of dialogue, I suppose, where Loomis sort of says to someone, you're talking about Michael as if he was a human being. <laughs> Just very, very serious there. Or the guy at the asylum at the start where he's telling this ambulance this ambulance worker about Michael and the ambulance worker just says, Jesus. And the asylum worker just turns around and says, Jesus don't even know what this place is. Yeah, I'll be glad to see the back of this one. Gives me the willies. And I'm just like... How long has this guy worked at the asylum? Isn't he used to it by now? Why is he trying to scare everyone with the inmates and stuff? It's just a very, very cheesy 80s tone. But it kind of works for the movie. However, i got to talk about the biggest flaw this movie has going for it. And it's that damn mask, which this movie is very, very famous for. Having probably one of, if not the worst, Michael Myers masks. And I can see why. Anyone can see why when they watch this movie. It's almost too clean looking. It looks plastic. It makes Michael Myers not scary. It also kind of makes him look like a puppet walking around at times. The whole costume is just totally off. It looks directly taken from a cheap Halloween store and just put on George P. Wilbur's character there. Now, nothing against George P. Wilbur. he done an okay performance here, but... It's the whole look, which just totally ruins everything that he puts into it, because Michael Myers looks pathetic in this movie. And it's just such a shame, because how can your 1978 movie and the 1980 Hall 1981 Halloween 2 have a much better look of masks than a movie that came, what, almost 10 years later? It looks so bad, and it really took me out the film at times, unfortunately. Also, how the fuck did Michael Myers make it to the back of that truck at the end of the film? It, there's just no way. There's just no way that he could have done that in that amount of time without anyone seeing him do it. I get this is a cheesy slasher film, but it asks you to suspend your disbelief and logic and just go along with it. And... Even if they showed us getting onto the van, it's still probably... If, even if they showed us Michael getting onto the van, it still probably would have worked the same way. Because we all know that he's going to do it anyway. But, uh, yeah, that was just lazy filmmaking, in my opinion. And I know that this character is not meant to be human by now because he's even survived Halloween 2 and stuff. But he can teleport? I don't think so. And lastly, although there are some cool kills here, uh, a lot of them do just involve Michael Myers squeezing people in the face with his fingers and his strength and just kind of killing them that way. He's a master with a butcher knife, but they hardly use that here. They just go with the fingers. I think there's about three kills at least here where Michael just kills people with his bare hands and it kind of seemed wasted. I'd say half of them are good, like... Bucky getting thrown on the electric line and stuff. But half of them are very lacklustre. And I just wish they'd done something else at times. I'm just going to go ahead and rate this movie now. I'm going to give Halloween 4 a 7.5 out of 10. Despite some flaws, I had a really, really good time with this. It was good to see Michael back. And despite the third movie, it's shaping up to be a pretty strong franchise on this rewatch. Bring on Halloween 5. Am I the only person who's ever said that? Okay, guys, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now, a fun fact for Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, is that George P. Wilbur, who played Michael Myers in this movie, would often lift his mask up and say to Daniel Harris that it's just a movie, don't worry, I'm not really going to hurt you. And maybe at times he thought that Daniel Harris's screaming was really convincing and that she was really scared. I don't know, but it was nice of him to do that, I suppose. Okay, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this review. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments about Halloween 4 down below. We've got Halloween 5, 
a review for that film coming next and if you want to check out any of my other Halloween reviews the playlist will be down below so don't forget to check those out as well thanks so much guys take it all easy and I'll see you on the next video